Symbiosis is the 22nd episode of the American science fiction television series Star Trek – The Next Generation. It first aired on April 18, 1988, in broadcast syndication. The teleplay was written by Robert Lewin, Richard Manning, and Hans Beimler, based on a story by Lewin, and the episode was directed by Wynne Phelps. The episode was written after executive producer Maurice Hurley worked on Miami Vice, which he credited for resulting in the drug trade theme in the episode. The guest cast included Judson Scott and Merritt Buttrick who had both appeared in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan 1982. The episode received mixed reviews with criticism directed at the subject matter and the unsubtle nature of the presentation. Topic. Plot The Enterprise attempts to rescue the freighter Sanction, which is trapped in a star's magnetic field. An agreement is reached to transport over the crew of the freighter, but they surprisingly send over a cargo barrel first. The Enterprise crew attempts to transport the freighter's crew, but is only successful in recovering four of them before their ship is destroyed. Two, to John Merritt Buttrick and Roma's Richard Lineback, are scruffy and unshaven, while the other two, Soby Judson Scott and Langer Kimberly Farr, are groomed and well dressed. They all show relief that the barrel made it over, and little remorse for the lost ship and crewmen. Both groups start to fight over the ownership of the barrel and are escorted to the observation lounge under guard. The two pairs come from different planets within the same system. It is explained that the barrel contains felicium, a medicine for a plague which is ravaging the planet Ernera. Felicium is produced on the planet Breca, but the Ornorans are the only race in the system with the means of space travel, however, the two remaining Ornoran ships were all built long ago and are beginning to fail due to overuse and lack of maintenance, and the Ornorans no longer know how to repair them. Captain Jean-Luc Picard Patrick Stewart offers to return them each to Ernera and provide replacement parts for the remaining freighters. The Breckens, Sobe and Langer, argue that they retain ownership of the Felicium, as the items the Ornorans offered in payment were lost on board the freighter. To John and Romas, of Ernera, are suffering from the effects of the plague, and are sent to sickbay where Dr. Beverly Crusher Gates McFadden can find no reason for their symptoms. In a gesture of goodwill, following the demand of compassion from Crusher, the Breckens offer two doses of Felicium for to John and Roma's immediate needs. Langer explains that the entire Brecken economy and industry is devoted to producing the medicine for Ernera, whose inhabitants provide Breca with the necessities of daily life in return. After Tajan and Romas take their doses, Dr. Crusher realizes that Felicium is actually a highly addictive narcotic, and the plague itself was cured long ago, so the symptoms believed to be attributed to the plague were actually withdrawal symptoms. Crusher wants to offer assistance to aid the Ornorans in breaking free of their addiction, but Picard warns that the Federation cannot intervene due to the Prime Directive. He and Dr. Crusher later question the Breckens alone and confirm that the Breckens know the truth regarding the plague being eradicated, and the addictive nature of the medicine, and are knowingly exploiting the Ornorans because Brecca's economy would collapse if the Ornorans no longer needed Felicium. 
The Enterprise arrives at Ernera, and Sobi and Langer have agreed to provide the Felicium to the Ornerans for later payment. However, Picard announces that as the Prime Directive prevents him from interfering in the transactions between the two planets, it also prevents him from providing any replacement parts for the aging freighters. Tajan and Romas are furious at the decision as it means that the trade between Ernera and Breca will stop because the freighters can no longer make the trips without the parts. After the four are transported off the Enterprise, Picard confides to Dr. Crusher that while the Ornerans may suffer from withdrawal symptoms in the short term, this will be an opportunity for both races to advance in their own ways. Topic. Production The episode was influenced by co-executive producer Maurice Hurley's recent work on Miami Vice, and was intended to have the Enterprise come across a drug deal in progress. Hurley was also responsible for the insertion of a "'Just Say No' style drug speech by Tasha Yar Denise Crosby to Wesley Crusher Will Whedon which came over the objections from the cast guest stars in this episode included two who had previously appeared in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan 1982 as Sobe and Tajan were played by Judson Scott and Merritt Buttrick respectively Buttrick had also appeared in Star Trek III, The Search for Spock, on both occasions he portrayed David Marcus, the son of Captain James T. Kirk. Buttrick, who was suffering from AIDS, was unable to afford health insurance, and was offered the role as a way of helping him. He died of AIDS less than a year after filming this episode. Director Wynne Phelps recalled that there were numerous continuity issues throughout filming, with character motivations changing from one scene to the next. Because of changes to the script, the actors were often acting scenes that they had not seen the script for before the first take. Symbiosis was filmed after. Skin of Evil, which featured the death of Tasha Yar, making this the final filmed episode with Denise Crosby as Yar until she reappeared in Yesterday's Enterprise. Towards the end of the episode, as Picard and Crusher leave the cargo bay, Crosby can be seen waving goodbye to the camera behind them. LeVar Burton later used behind-the-scenes footage from this episode in a feature on his show Reading Rainbow. Reception Symbiosis aired in broadcast syndication during the week commencing April 22, 1988. It received Nielsen ratings of 10.8, reflecting the percentage of all households watching the episode during its time slot. This was the highest ratings received by the series since the broadcast of Too Short a Season during the preceding February. The ratings received by Symbiosis were not beaten until the first episode of the second season, The Child. Symbiosis. First aired in broadcast syndication within the United States on April 18, 1988. Several reviewers re-watched the episode after the end of the series. Zach Hanlan reviewed the episode for The A.V. Club in May 2010. He felt that the drug use allegory could have been better refined, but praised the performance of Patrick Stewart and gave the episode an overall grade of a B. Keith DeCandido watched the episode for Tor.com, and described it as the least subtle. 
message based episode since the original series episode let that be your last battlefield he criticized the electricity based powers of the two alien species saying that they didn't add anything to the plot he gave the episode a score of 4 out of 10 james hunt of the website den of geek said that this is one of those episodes which exemplify all that is awful about Star Trek in general. I'm not talking about season one's dubious production values, which, to be fair, are considerably more even than they were when the series began, but about the episode's very fabric. Michelle Erica Green for Trek Nation thought that the episode could have been better if the guest cast was up to a better quality. However, she felt that the episode fell foul of several TNG season 1 writing errors, such as Deanna Troy's statements breaking any mounting tension and the crew failing to do such quite simple steps such as separating feuding aliens and William Riker being held hostage for the second time in successive episodes. Topic. Home media release The first home media release of Symbiosis was on VHS cassette, appearing on May 26, 1993 in the United States and Canada. The episode was later included on the Star Trek – The Next Generation Season 1 DVD box set, released in March 2002, and then released as part of the Season 1 Blu-ray set on July 24, 2012. <laughs> Notes <laughs>